Sitting with Stephen Parker, you guys know I appreciate you so much for all of your love and support. If you would be so kind and hit the share button so someone else can learn something from this wonderful interview that we're going to do today. As you know, I'm always bringing you impactful and inspirational people who will help change and help push your life in the direction you, we want it to go. I have a, somebody here today that I am just so overwhelmed. I've been telling you guys about it and advertising about it. She is one of the most preeminent actresses in Hollywood. She's the diva that has done it all. She has a book out now. It's called Every Day I'm Hustling. You know her from Empire. The list goes on and on. You know her from Set It Off, one of the most baddest movies that people love. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to Sitting with Stephen Parker, Miss Vivica Fox. Hey, hey y'all, what's happening? Every day I'm, I'm hustling. hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Oh, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. And first of all, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know it's busy, but you made time for me and I appreciate it. And even more than that, Viv, thank you because when my mother died, you were there for me. You reached out to me. You sent a wonderful video uh, tribute to my mom. And I just wanted to publicly say thank you for your kindness that you you're, always you're show You're welcome, me. brother. You know, and... The last year I lost my father as That's well right. too. That's and, right. You know, when you lose a parent, uh, I, I was we were so blessed that we both were were of a certain age. That's right. That you know we got to experience our parents for such a long time. And, yes, ma'am. And I'm I'm grateful for those. So when you told me that you lost your mother, you know. That's all you can do is like send a hug and send yeah. condolences yeah. and that we both are grateful for the time that we had with them and now they're not suffering and they're up and down they're looking down at us. Looking down at them saying, go on, Cherry. Go on, Cherry. Go on, Cherry. Keep, keep the legacy. Continue. Amen. And speaking of le legacy, it's all started in Indianapolis, yes, Indiana. I love hearing when I was reading your book some of the stories of your child. What was it like growing up in, the, in, in your household with your family? Well, my mother uh, and my father, they they divorced when my mother had moved mm -hmm. into her house in Indianapolis, Indiana. We were originally from South Bend, Indiana. South Bend. And my mother uh, moved the family to Indianapolis, Indiana when I was four years old. Wow. And we lived um, off of Leland, across the street from the church. From the church. And I'm going to tell you, my mama <laughs> always had us... In the church. You was at church all every the time? Every time the church doors was open, Evelina was like, go on over there. And I'm glad she did because yeah. later in life, it definitely gave me a lot of morals and discipline wow. to last as long as what I have in show business, which is a very tough business. Yes. 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 So Indianapolis was fun. I went to Arlington High School. Wow. I was a cheerleader. I played basketball, volleyball, and track. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have always been a multitasker, to wow. say the least. So wow. I had a great childhood, but I left one month after I graduated from high school in search of a dream that I have been able to live out beyond my wildest, wildest wow. expectations. Wow. So you always knew that you wanted to be in entertainment in some sort of way? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the person that gave me the entertainment bug was Madam King, wow. who was my auntie who lived in Chicago. She was the very per first person to cut my hair and put me on a runway. <laughs> and y'all, I was striped. Okay? Right. <laughs> and that's when I kind of got bit by the entertainment bug. And then next, I went to go see my Michael Jackson and Diana Ross oh. in concert. And I had never seen talented African Americans on wow. stage like those two. Wow. And I was like, where do they live? Right. <laughs> they live in California. So my senior year, I decided that I was going to go to California and I was going to become a star. Wow. It took a minute. Right, but, right, right. <laughs> but I did come to California. I had to trick my mama and had to tell her that I was going to school. And I right. did go to college. I got an A in social sciences. And then I started knocking on doors. Knocking on doors. Yes. What was one of the first roles that was prominent for you with it that made you say, okay, here we go? Was it the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? <laughs> <laughs> When you was messing with Will. Well, I was a date from hell. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. I was. I played Jazzy and Jeff's sister. Right, right. And I gave Will a hard time at Carlton. I Carlton, right. <laughs> right, so that was fun. And, uh, but no, actually, I started off on soap operas. Days you of did? My Lives, yeah. Did. And then I did a couple of cameo appearances on things. But the thing that really let me know that I wanted to be in show business when I started off in Generations. Wow. And being on Generations and being on TV five days a week and learning those lines and learning how to cry on cue and, right. and the drama and learn is something that I will always treasure. Something right. that I will, 
I, like people trying to give soap actors a hard time. Uh -huh. Those are some of the hardest working actors you'll ever meet. Yeah. You go home and memorize 20 to 30 pages Ooh. of dialogue per night. Mm. That's a beast. Yeah. And put it on and make it look real and have people believe the story. So, right. yeah, so definitely I would say soap operas. And that's what got started. Like, what kind of that, got you. Yeah, yeah, that got me in there. I like Which it. soap opera Young and the Restless then led to Independence Day. Well, yeah, yes. Independence Day. Because the producer's wife was at home pregnant. Bill Fay's wife and, wow. and asked him when he came home, have you guys found Jasmine? And I had called my agent a couple of weeks before and then going, how come I'm not getting an audition for Independence Day? Right. Because I had did Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with Will. Yeah. And so uh, she gave me a call. First she said, your name's not big enough. And yeah, well, right, in other words, go and sit back over there and right. watch the show till you get ready to come up to the big league. Uh, but then she gave me a call and I had to audition six times. Wow. And then I got the part and pretty much the rest is history. The I mean, it led history. to big movie after big movie after big movie. So yeah. I've been very blessed. Yeah. Who, who would you say, uh, if you had to call somebody's name, was somebody who said, okay, I see something in you, young lady. I want to mentor you and invest in you. Who is there someone in Hollywood that I, did I, that for you? I would definitely say that that was Sheila Wills, who when I did Generation, she played uh, she played um, a love interest, uh, I think, to Richard Roundtree on mm -hmm. the show for mm -hmm. me. No, she actually played a love interest to Christoph, my boyfriend. What? Because he liked the older ladies. Right, right. And so her and I, I remember one time I was having a hard time figuring out how to cry. And she was took me in the corner and was like, come here, you're rushing your moments. Like Sheila Wills and also Jada Pickett Smith were actors that told me to learn my moments. Wow. But Sheila became my acting coach. Um, and now I am the godmama to her two daughters' sons. Wow. Yeah. You got so five god kids. I have six. six. I just got another. I told Lexi, look here. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all gonna quit it with these god children. No, no, no. And I have one more. Excuse me. I had one more person come and ask me recently uh, about being another guy. I said, no, I'm auntie. I'm not doing auntie now. Auntie. I'm auntie. I'm auntie because sooner or later, them six grown kids going to want to go to college. And you know who they're going to come ask. That's them. it. Right. That's it. They're going to come ask auntie yes, them. Yes. Wonderful. And so, and I'll ask you this because I think, and we'll get to a couple of other poignant things in the book that, and I love when you say, you know, be careful who you meet or how you treat them because they may be someone who can open a door for you or yes, hire right. you or fire you, yeah. you know. Well, I'll tell you, I will never forget when I did um, Born on the Fourth of July and I had three very small parts, three, three very small lines. Right. Um, I played a lady of the night and <laughs> Tom Cruise, uh, I was making a visit in the hospital, lady of the night working in the hospital, wow. a long girl, uh, came over and introduced himself to me wow. and said hello and thank you, thanked me for working. And he walked away and he was in all of this really bad makeup, so it wasn't until he walk, walked away that his eyes wow. stuck with me. And I was like, wait a minute, who, who was wow. that? And it was Tom Cruise. Wow. And that taught me a lesson that no matter how big of a star you become, mm. always remain humble wow. and keep a spirit of, keep an attitude of gratitude wow. and a spirit of knowing that you are blessed. That's it. And you never know that handshake, that moment that he took for me, how much that impacted my wow. life. Wow. You know, and, and, and made me glad. It's like, wow, I really love doing this. I meet amazing yeah. people. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. You're sitting with Stephen Parker. I got my girl, Vivica A. Fox, in the building. She got the book, Every Day I'm Hustling. You got to go get it. It will be inspirational to your life. I promise you that. I want to ask you this, Viv. Mm -hmm. You know, being in uh, Hollywood for so long, you've heard all of the uh, sexual abuse things. And I know you personally have had to see this. How do you feel about how now that is being exposed? And what is it going to do for the business now that that's being exposed? Well, I will be very honest with you. I've never experienced okay. that. Okay. I, I, but, you know, I've definitely heard mm -hmm. about the horror stories. And this is what I say to all young actors or young people that are in, a, in, in business, mm -hmm. that there are no shortcuts to success. Wow. You know, if wow. someone is trying to offer you a shortcut, more than likely it's going to lead yeah. to a dead end. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. There are no shortcuts to success. Yeah. If you want to achieve a career that you can literally stand on your own two feet and say, I earned this moment. Mm -hmm. I earned my mm -hmm. credentials. Mm -hmm. Do that. Do the work. I know today, to all young people, we live in Insta-swipe, Insta-gratification. Right. Insta 
Let me tell you something. A career does not happen overnight. Wow. Um, longevity has equaled the key to my success. Mm -hmm. um, versatility has also equaled the key to my right. longevity right. and my success. So I always tell people, like, especially if you're going in the entertainment field, be a triple threat. Yeah. Be able to sing, be able to dance, be able to act. Because nowadays, you never know what the job right. may require. That's right. But please remember... Do the work. That's right. There are no shortcuts to success. Wow. Wow. Love it. You heard it here from the lady of longevity. And, I, 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 and I'm wondering those times when things weren't always working and it was uh -huh. one of the down times. What did you use to motivate yourself? How could someone who was out there say, ah, it's not happening the way I want it to happen. What would you use to motivate yourself? Well, Sheila Wills, my acting coach, she always told me, because there were times like when I was stuck in between like the soap opera and Independence right. Day and almost went broke and had to borrow money from my mama. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that she told me to stay ready. To stay ready because you never know what audition mm -hmm. or what opportunity may come your way that will open the doors mm. to the rest of your career. So stay ready. Exercise. Drink water. Wow. Take care of yourself. Keep your spirit happy. Wow. Because like I said, you never know when you get that audition that one day that then will lead to everything else. Wow. So, yeah, stay ready. I love it. Stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. Yes. Now, we got to talk about, uh, you, you you talk about 50 Cent in this book mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. You guys were together, and I don't want to ask you anything. Y'all get the book if you want to know the juice. You right. buy the book, and you can read all about it. It starts what? on page 137. What? <laughs> page 137. <laughs> So, so what I will ask you is, dating men in the business and dating men out of the business, is there a, a preference for yours or do you find it easier for guys who are not in the line just to go every day, nine to five job, or, you know, do you prefer guys in the business? Well, I can't tell someone who to love. And that was the reason why I wrote the chapter, because I wanted to add... I wanted there to be clarity about our relationship because so many people wanted to know why it went on for such a long time. Right. And there was a lot of misconceptions out there where I clear that up. Wow. And I also offer advice because there I was in other relationships beside that one, but that one was definitely the one that was the most public mm -hmm. that people mm -hmm. were most uh, fascinated with. Right. And um, because we were two different kind of people. Um, but what I suggest in the book for ladies that if you do date someone that's in show business mm -hmm. and you're an actress, that you just have to make sure that you take the time to get to know a person. Wow. And that's not besides show business. It's in any, wow. any walks of life. When you meet someone, male or female, make sure you take the time to get to know a person. Me personally, I don't prefer to date anyone else in show business okay. from that experience. Okay, from that experience. Just because it was, it's just too... too it, it's difficult when you both are in the spotlight and competition comes into play. Yeah. So my preference is I prefer my next man going to be a businessman <laughs> somewhere far away from show business. All I need you to do is make sure that my check is coming in and that they made their contract right. And that, you know, your contract's big too. Right. I love it. I love it. What, what, what can somebody get from this book? If somebody... You know, gets this book. What what could they expect from this book? The main goal of the book, uh, the reason why I decided to do the book, is I give hats off to my publicist, B.J. Coleman, um, who came to me and said, I think it's time for you to do a book. And I was like, you're going to give me another job? <laughs> right. Because there's so many things that are going <laughs> right, on right absolutely. Now. I have a hairline. I'm yes. producing movies, stage plays. Um, I'm acting. I'm trying to live a little bit. Yeah. And uh, he said, yeah. I said, but I'm not ready to share everything. You know, he says, well, make it a motivational memoir, Vivica, okay. because okay. you are a woman that's in your 50s. You look good. People are trying to figure out how does a woman that's in her 50s, especially in a business that normally chooses and spits women out Hello. at age 35, 40, Hello. how are you figuring out how to go to these new chapters? Mm -hmm. So this is how we came up with Every Day I'm Hustling. Every Day I'm Hustling is 19 lessons in a five-part series wow. where I teach you everything from family, fashion, fitness, romance. Uh, you get to see my top 20 list of movies. Yeah. Uh, music, recipes. Recipes. My sister's hot water cornbread <laughs> recipe and black eyed peas yeah. recipe is in here. So you kind of, what I love about Every Day I'm Hustling is that you get to meet Vivica. Wow. So many times you guys have seen me on the red carpet. You've seen me play these strong roles and stuff like that. Right. The one thing that everyone's been telling me about the book is that mm -hmm. they said, I really feel like I finally got to know Look at that. You. Look at that. Angie Fox from 38th and Emerson. Now. So, <laughs> you know, that that's what I that's what I love about the book is that it is to empower, enlighten 
and encourage others. That you too, no matter where you're at in your life, to not be afraid wow. to plant those seeds wow. of success because you have to plant those seeds it. of success for them to blossom. I love that. Oh, I love that. Drop them pearls. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, pearls of wisdom. Every day I'm hustling. You guys go out and get it. What does the future hold for my girl, Vivica Fox? Well, I know you got some stuff in the oven. I do. Well, it's so, such a blessing that it's been a season of blessing, to be very honest with you. I'm, I'm a first-time author, and next I am going to have my own talk show hey. called Face the Truth, executive, Face the Truth. executive produced by Dr. Phil. It's wow. a panel-style talk show where two guests will come on, and we have them face the truth. Wow. Straight up, no chaser. My panel consists of Ariva Martin, who is a lawyer. Wow. Rosie McCardo, who is a motivational life coach. Dr. Ho, hey. who is a psychiatrist. <laughs> Not that I'm a <laughs> but a psychiatrist. And, of course, your girl, Vivica Fox, will be dishing out some knowledge as well, too. Wow. That will be coming out this fall, CBS, hopefully right before Dr. Phil, my executive producer. I love that. I know, I yes. Love that. And the Vivica Fox <laughs> hair collection has been extended for four more years. Boom. And I also have a murder mystery movie that's going to be coming out, out called Stranded. And who knows? Oh, I'm back on Empire. Yeah. <laughs> Cookie yeah. sister. Cook Candace, the bougie <laughs> one. <laughs> So, lots of blessings. I love it. Do you ever just sit back and say, Lord, what in the world? How did I get here and all these people and all these doors? Can I tell you that moment happened to me mm. for the first time that I kind of went, wow, God, you're so good. And that was when I was at Good Morning America. Mm. And it was the very first interview for the book, television interview. Wow. And I was backstage. I've done Good Morning America yeah, yeah, yeah. many times over right. the years. And I went out there and I shot the scene to say, hey, coming up on Good Morning America. And then they took me backstage and the huge jumbotron in the middle of Times Square opened, came upon the whole block. And it was like, every day I'm hustling by Vivica Fox. And I went, wow. And I had no one to depend on but myself. And I'll never forget that years ago when I lived in New York City and I was a struggling actor. Mm. And I was living with my girlfriend, Jill Jones. And when she told me she was moving, I had to come back to California. And I can remember driving away in that taxi cab mm. with my little bags in the back. And I looked at the New York skyline and I said, when I come back, I will become a star. And there I was in the middle of Times Square as an author. Wow. So dreams come true, y'all. But as I said... There are no shortcuts to success. You have to do the work. Wow. And you will be blessed. Keep your spirit right. Listen to your parents. Go to church. Yes. And know that God is good and yes. He provides blessings. But you have to do the work. Yes. I love it. Y'all heard it right here. I got my girl Vivica Fox. I just got to say thank you so much. I know you got so much to do. I love you so much. Would you guys please go and support this woman of God? Get this wonderful book every day. I'm hustling. I was in it last night. It's a page turner. <laughs> It's a page turner. So you guys go get it. So tell them where they can find all yes, your stuff. Follow you all that. First of all, I want to start off by saying Every Day I'm Hustling is available now wherever books are stored. That's right. Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Audible.com. Also, uh, you can find me on Twitter at MS Vivica Fox. I got my official blue check. Yeah. On Instagram at MS Fox, my official check. Yeah. And Facebook and also my website, VivicaFox.com. If you meet another, she's a phony. That's the one and only, your girl Vivica Fox. It's my girl Vivica Fox. I gotta thank her. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please go get this book. Follow her on all the social media sites. I love you. I appreciate you guys always tuning in. And thank you for joining in. It's your man Steve Parker with Vivica Fox. What about that? Okay. I'm out. We'll see y'all next time. Every day we hustling, hustling, hustling. Ow! Every day we hustling. <laughs> hustling. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that was